Hello. In our last video on cryptography, we took a look at symmetric key cryptography. We used a single private key for both the encryption and decryption of data, and it works very well in theory. Let's take a look at a more realistic scenario now. Let's meet Joe. Joe is a journalist who needs to communicate with Ryan via long distance messaging. Due to the critical nature of the information, people are waiting for any message to leave Joe's house so that they can intercept it. Now Joe can easily use symmetric key cryptography to send the encrypted data so that even if someone intercepts the message they cannot understand what it says. But here's the tricky part. How will Joe send the required decryption key to Ryan? The sender of the message as well as the receiver need to have the same decryption key so that they can exchange messages. Otherwise Ryan cannot decrypt the information even when he receives the cipher text. If someone intercepts the key while transmitting it there is no use in employing cryptography since a third party can now decode all the information easily. Key sharing is a risk that will always exist when symmetric key cryptography is being used. Thankfully, asymmetric key encryption has managed to fix this problem. This is Bhavav from Simply Learn and welcome to this video on asymmetric key cryptography. Let's take a look at what we are going to learn today. We begin by explaining what asymmetric key cryptography is and how it works. We take a look at its application and uses. We understand why it's called public key cryptography and then learn a little bit about RSA encryption. And then we learn about the advantages of asymmetric key cryptography over symmetric key cryptography. Let's understand what asymmetric key cryptography is. Asymmetric encryption uses a double layer of protection. There are two different keys at play here, a private key and a public key. A public key is used to encrypt the information pre-transit and a private key is used to decrypt the data post-transit. These pair of keys must belong to the receiver of the message. The public keys can be shared via messaging, blog posts or key servers and there are no restrictions. As you can see in the image, the two keys are working in the system. The sender first encrypts the message using the receiver's private key, after which we receive the ciphertext. The ciphertext is then transmitted to the receiver without any other key. On getting the ciphertext, the receiver uses his private key to decrypt it and get the plain text back. There has been no requirement of any key exchange throughout this process, therefore solving the most glaring flaw faced in symmetric key cryptography. The public key known to everyone cannot be used to decrypt the message and the private key which can decrypt the message need not be shared with anyone. The sender and receiver can exchange personal data using the same set of keys as often as possible. To understand this better, take the analogy of your mailbox. Anyone who wants to send you a letter has access to the box and can easily share information with you. In a way, you can say the mailbox is publicly available to all, but only you have access to the key that can open the mailbox and read the letters in it. This is how the private key comes to play. No one can intercept the message and read its contents since it's encrypted. Once the receiver gets its contents, he can use his private key to decrypt the information. Both the public key and the private key are generated so they are interlinked and you cannot substitute other private keys to decrypt the data. In another example, if Alice wants to send a message to Bob, let's say it reads call me today, she must use Bob's public key while encrypting the message. Upon receiving the cipher message, Bob can proceed to use his private key in order to decrypt the message and hence complete security is attained during transmission without any need for sharing the key. Since this type of encryption is highly secure, it has many uses in areas that require high confidentiality. It is used to manage digital signatures, so there is valid proof of a document's authenticity. With so many aspects of business transitioning to the digital sphere, Critical documents need to be verified before being considered authentic and acted upon. Thanks to asymmetric cryptography, senders can now sign documents with their private keys. Anyone who needs to verify the authenticity of such signatures can use the sender's public key to decrypt the signature. Since the public and the private keys are linked to each other mathematically, it's impossible to repeat this verification with duplicate keys. Document encryption has been made very simple by today's standards, but the background implementation follows a similar approach. In blockchain architecture, asymmetric key cryptography is used to authorize transactions and maintain the system. Thanks to its two key structures, changes are reflected across the blockchain's peer-to-peer -peer network only if it is approved from both ends. 
Along with asymmetric cryptography stamp proof architecture, its non repudiation characteristic also helps in keeping the network stable. We can also use asymmetric cryptography combined with symmetric cryptography to monitor SSL or TLS encrypted browsing sessions to make sure nobody can steal our personal information when accessing banking websites or the internet in general. It plays a significant role in verifying website server authenticity, exchanging the necessary encryption keys required, and generating a session using those keys to ensure maximum security instead of the rather insecure HTTP website format. Security parameters differ on a session by session basis, so the verification process is consistent and utterly essential to modern data security. Another great use of the asymmetric key cryptography structure is transmitting keys for symmetric key cryptography. With the most significant difficulty in symmetric encryption being key exchange, asymmetric keys can help clear the shortcoming. The original message is first encrypted using a symmetric key. The key used for encrypting the data is then converted into the ciphertext using the receiver's public key. Now we have two ciphertexts to transmit to the receiver. On receiving both of them, the receiver uses his private key to decrypt the symmetric key. He can then use it to decrypt the original information on getting the key used to encrypt the data. While this may seem more complicated than just asymmetric key cryptography alone, symmetric encryption algorithms are much more optimized for vast amounts of data on some occasions. Encrypting the key using asymmetric algorithms will definitely be more memory efficient and secure. You might remember us discussing why symmetric encryption was called private key cryptography. Let us understand why asymmetric falls under the public key cryptography. We have two keys at our disposal. The encryption key is available to everyone. The decryption key is supposed to be private. Unlike symmetric key cryptography, there is no need to share anything privately to have an encrypted messaging system. To put that into perspective, we share our email address with anyone looking to communicate with us. It is supposed to be public by design so that our email login credentials are private and they help in preventing any data mishandling. Since there is nothing hidden from the world, if they want to send us any encrypted information, this category is called the public key cryptography. There are quite a few algorithms being used today that follow the architecture of asymmetric cryptography, none more famous than the RSA encryption. RSA encryption is the most widely used encryption or public key encryption standard using asymmetric key approach. Named after its founders, Rivest, Shamir and Edelman, it uses block ciphers to obscure the information. If you are unfamiliar with how block ciphers work, they are encryption algorithms that divide the original data into blocks of equal size. The block size depends on the exact cipher being used. Once they are broken down, these blocks are encrypted individually and later chained together to form the final ciphertext. Widely considered to be the most secure form of encryption, albeit relatively slower than symmetric encryption algorithms, it is widely used in web browsing, secure identification, VPNs, emails, and other chat applications. With so many variables in play, there must be some advantages that give asymmetric cryptography an edge over the traditional symmetric encryption methodologies. Let's go through some of them. There is no need for any reliable key sharing channel in asymmetric encryption. It was an added risk in private key cryptography that has been completely eliminated in public key architecture. The key which is made public cannot decrypt any confidential information and the only key that can decrypt doesn't need to be shared publicly under any circumstance. We have much more extensive key lengths in RSA encryption and other asymmetric algorithms like 2048-bit key and 4096-bit keys. Larger keys are much harder to break into via brute force and are much more secure. Asymmetric key cryptography can use as a proof of authenticity since only the rightful owner of the keys can generate the messages to be decrypted by the private key. The situation can also be reversed. Encryption is done using a private key and decryption is done by the public key, which would not function if the correct private key is not used to generate the message, hence proving the authenticity of the owner. It also has a tamper protection feature where the message cannot be intercepted and changed without invalidating the private key used to encrypt the data. Consequently, the public key cannot decrypt the message and it is easy to realize the information is not 100% legitimate when and where the case requires. Hope you learned something interesting today. 
Feel free to ask us in the comment section if you have any more questions and subscribe to our channel for videos like this. Thanks for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.